Rob, thank you for joining me tonight. How are you? Thank you, Shannon. I'm doing great. I'm happy to uh, to be able to connect with you and not to make you feel too special, but this is the only interview that I've agreed to do since Survivor has uh, finished airing. So big, big fans of uh, your family and uh, your parents. So thanks for having me. That definitely means a lot to us. We are huge fans of you over here. I've watched every season. Survivor's a big thing in my family, but we've always been rooting for you. We get the Christmas cards, so we definitely yeah. appreciate you guys <laughs> coming on. You coming on tonight. It's been an honor, and we're very excited to be talking with awesome. you tonight. So to kick things off, you are fresh off the latest season of Survivor. What are your thoughts? How did it go? Now that you can talk about it, how would you sum mm -hmm. it up? I mean, we didn't get it done this time. I didn't have uh, $2 million in my bank account the morning when I woke up. But all in all, uh, it was a great season. I was very happy to have been asked and obviously to compete again for a record sixth time. I was happy that Tony won. I feel like he played the game the best this season. Fought till the end, you know, on the edge of extinction. Tried to get back in. Just wasn't meant to be this time. But... Uh, so it's a little bit bittersweet ending, but ultimately a long survivor journey, uh, which uh, has treated me pretty well over the years. Oh, absolutely. So as I mentioned with your list of accomplishments, you've been on six times. You had a shrine made for you. Do you think that kind of put a target yeah. on your back more than some of the <laughs> other all-stars? Yeah, no doubt about it did. I mean, uh, it's funny, like uh, after season 22, which was the fourth time I played Redemption Island, I'd finally won the game, and that's all I wanted to do was win. So I was done. I was in retirement, enjoying my life. And about two years ago, I'm working on a house here in Florida, and my phone rings, and it's Probst. And he said, hey, listen, I have this idea. We want you to come back and kind of mentor the new guys and uh, teach them what you know. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. He's like, listen, we're going to build a statue of you. <laughs> Sealed the deal. Okay, I'm in, I'm in. But while we're talking about this, in season 40, we're going to do an epic season where we're going to have all the winners back. And I was like, no way, really? He said, yeah. And I, I just knew, I knew there was going to be a huge target on me, but I felt like it was such a celebratory season. I thought about how I would feel the morning season 40 premiered and not being a part of it. And I was like, I told Amber, I was like, listen, we got to figure out a way to do this. we got to go and be a part of this. Got to make it happen. Honestly, I don't know if they'd yeah. have the season if you two weren't a part of it. That would just feel wrong. You can't have a winners at war season without Boston Rob. I know. Survive has definitely been a big part of both of our lives for, you know, almost 20 years now. So uh, I'm happy that we went. It was definitely a celebration this season. And uh, to answer your original question, yeah, I had a really big target on my on myself this season you definitely knew that and in addition to that going in with a target on your back you went in with your wife leaving mm -hmm. four girls at home tell me how yeah. was that how was their reaction how did you guys make that decision because i'm sure it wasn't easy no you know we never really left them for more than a couple days and it was like you know stayed with family this like timing wise it actually worked out not too bad they're at the age now where my my youngest is five and they're old enough to know where we're going. If we tell them, listen, we're going to go do this, and you can't say anything, they know enough to keep a secret. That coupled with the fact that it happened about a year ago this time, so they only had like a week left in the school year, and my parents have a house here in Florida also, so they were down visiting at the time, so they could just stay with their grandparents for the summer like uh, for like six weeks and it wouldn't be that hard they wouldn't have to like deal with taking them to school and everything else like i said it was the last week of school so that's pretty much a layup you know how that goes and uh they finished up the school year and then uh it got broken up because they got to come out there and visit us on the island too so they ended up all coming out taking a little two-week vacation out to fiji so for them not bad great yeah, gig they got it made great gig i'm jealous yeah. and you know what <laughs> I know all their middle names are Rose. Mm -hmm. My middle name is Rose. So, uh, are you my dad? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> my, my, um, my grandmother's middle name was Rose, my father's mother. And uh, all the girls born in the Mariano family 
their middle names are all Rose. Ironically, my mom, who's not a Mariano, she is, but only by marriage, but her middle name is Rose too. So it just so, works out. I don't like that, yeah. That's awesome, that's awesome. So you're very involved uh, with your daughters. I see them in there cutting wood with you, making fires. Do you see them getting involved yeah. with Survivor someday? Yeah, you never know, right? They, uh, they definitely got two good teachers with their mom and dad. They're, uh, they're awesome kids. They're, they're really smart and fun. And we do lots of stuff together as a family. It's like the most important thing in my life is spending time with them and my wife. And, uh, you know, we enjoy each other. So it's, it's fun. And maybe someday, you know, if they ever do want to do that, I'm definitely not going to hold them back. That's awesome. They definitely have two great coaches, but very different approaches. How do you feel like you and Amber, your personalities and in your relationship are kind of like how you handle your survivor game? How do you see yeah. that like shine through, like how you guys handle your relationship and kids and being people in general with your survivor gameplay? It's funny, like in survivor, like I feel like I'm the aggressive one yeah. and more laid back. Parenting, it might be a little bit, you know, the other way. But I think ultimately we balance each other pretty good. You know, they're at the age now where they try to play one off the other. And I'm like, listen, you know who invented this game, right? Like, <laughs> pull that on me. I know where you're yeah. coming from. Yeah. I see you. you yeah, see it's, you. Hard, it's hard for them to, uh, to get one over, but it doesn't stop them for trying. So. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So you guys approach. It's interesting because I've been watching the season my entire life. And people definitely say, like, I – didn't come into the game expecting to play this way or with this kind of strategy. Do you feel like that was the case for you? How did you expect to go into this game so far ago? Did you expect to be this kind of boss legend player? No, I mean, look, the, the thing that I have is I have the unique perspective to look back over playing six times almost two decades. So like, at 44 years old, I'm not the same player I was when I was 24 when I first played, you know, or 25. And, like, at that time of my life, I think I was bartending for your parents at bars in Boston and having a good time. Now I got four kids, a wife, and I have a lot more life experience, so things are different. Uh, but I think the main thing for anybody that's going to play Survivor is you have to know who you are. I think that's really important. Survive is definitely not the place to go to discover who you are as a person and try to figure that out because somebody that has more experience is going to chew you up and spit you out and you're not going to have a shot. So you got to know who you are and what you stand for. And I think like consistently, I've always known that across all the seasons that I've played, but my game has definitely evolved along the way with the game itself. I think anybody that only you know, is able to play in one dynamic or one certain way and not able to adapt is essentially going to be stuck in that paradox of, you know, the game is passing me by. Now, there were times when I was out there when I definitely was like, you know, the first time they introduced Hidden Immunity Idols after playing without them, I was like, what's this? Yeah. A minute to figure out how to do it. But ultimately, at your core, you can't change who you are. You go in with the best laid plans, it doesn't matter. The people that are best able to adapt to their situations are the ones that usually end up doing the best. So it seems like you've learned a lot over your six seasons of playing. Do you feel like each time you played, you not only, you not only played differently, but got something different out of each season? Yeah, I mean, uh, Survivor doesn't always, I think, give you what you want, but I feel like it always does give you what you need. Mm -hmm. It's weird, like, as a 24, 25-year-old kid, when I went out there, I didn't win, but, like, I learned something about, you know, not only how I played the game, but how I talked to people, how I dealt with people, and then, you know, as, as you get older and mature, you learn along the way different things, so... I have a definitely teaches you life lessons if your eyes are open to it. Absolutely. One of the most beautiful scenes of this season for me was the last episode, Amber on Redemption Island, talking about what this season and what being on the island has done for her. 
and yeah. she talks on slowing down and how she's been able to just embrace the small moments in life and re really reflect on what she appreciates and my mom and I were sitting there and we're like oh my goodness she's she's defining quarantine right now it was kind, yeah. of, kind of incredible it did it, obviously she didn't know this it was, was like a year before it happened so uh, exactly you know? yeah. did, did she when you guys watching that back were you guys kind of like wow like that that moment was was definitely, <laughs> definitely very beautiful and interesting yeah thanks no i don't know you know i think uh she works hard obviously we got four kids we had four kids in five years yeah. so imagine that's like a lot that's of work. a lot of pregnant <laughs> yeah yeah well we found something we were good at in life yeah. so. <laughs> but uh no she works hard every single day she doesn't she's non-stop she's going she's going she's going so it was kind of like a little bit like a vacation for her where like she doesn't have to like, you know, worry about anything or do anything. But I think like, that's like a lot of people, like I was saying, if your eyes are open to, you know, different gifts Survivor can provide to you, it's that like all this extraneous stuff that you have in the world that you think is so important that you need to attend to at any given moment. We live in a time with our phones and computers and emails and everything none of it really matters you know when you set it all aside it's your human interaction with each other connecting with with one another and uh you know like we try to do that on sundays here at home like we have dinner together we put our phones away put that stuff away and just spend some time and do some time with some things with each other and i think it's a good reminder that you know like even this quarantine it's a good Absolutely. reminder that, you know the things that matter most in our life, our family and our friends and all the other stuff at the end of the day, life goes so fast now, you know, it's really not that important. Exactly. And I feel like that message from quarantine is also something that's always been very present throughout Survivor. That's one thing that has stuck the same. Other than the things that have stuck the same, what do you think has changed with Survivor since the first time you played and the last time you played? It's faster. It's a lot faster now, the game, you know, and especially this season with all winners, everybody understands the strategy. There's no spots out there, you know what I mean? There's no easy votes. They've all played before and when they've all won, they really understand the strategic aspect of the game, the social aspect of the game. Everybody's being nice. Nobody's making sure they don't get on anybody's nerves. Where in a regular season, you know, somebody might make that mistake. But ultimately, I think at its core, the game is still the same. You know, you have to figure out a way to vote people off and then earn their respect along the way so that they want to vote for you to win at the end. But it's just, you know, the way they go about the different strategies with voting blocks and switching of alliances and all of that stuff, it's definitely at a higher level now than it's ever been. It seems very intense right now. So when you first started out, you were a young bartender in Boston. Let's talk about yeah. that, where it all started. How did all that happen? What, me, what inspired you to try out for Survivor? What started this? Uh, I, uh, I went to college for five years at Boston University and then made my parents wicked proud by going to work in construction. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you know? Yeah, and bartended at night at the place and then at the creative spa. And uh, I was living the dream. I was making a lot more money than my psychology degree would dictate. But uh, lo and behold, I tell my dad every day, I ended up using that psychology degree, just not in the everyday way that you know, people would think of a psychologist between Survivor and playing poker and everything else. I've definitely been able to use what I learned. You learned it back. Yeah. But I don't know. I just uh, sent in a tape and, you know, I heard about the show. I watched it on TV. It was season two back in the day. This guy Colby was on and everybody loved Colby and Colby was the greatest thing in the world. And I remember sitting there with my dad being like, I would kick that kid's ass. <laughs> My dad was like, yeah, well, why don't you, uh, why don't you send in a tape there, Hot Shot, see if you can. And uh, so I did. And I don't know, you know, it's like you don't, you don't have the choice whether or not to be asked back when you go on the show. And I think just I got lucky that first time I showed enough of myself the way I was. And I think what the executives and Jeff and Mark and the people at CBS really appreciate 
is that every time they call me, they know what they're going to get. I'm consistent. Like, I haven't changed over the years. You ask my buddies back at home, they still give me a hard time. They'll never let me get too big for my britches. They'll start calling me Hollywood and stuff. And, you know, they won't, they won't let it go to my head. So I'm pretty, pretty grounded. I have a good family and good friends that I think that's why, like, they've asked me back over the years. Absolutely. And some great advice you gave earlier in this interview was you need to know yourself before you go on the show. And it seems like you definitely yeah. knew yourself before you went on the show and then kept that consistent throughout the season. Right now, you know, you were just talking about after graduating college, a lot of kids are not graduating like the way they're supposed to be. The class of 2020 with college graduates and seniors in high school, they're going through a strange time right now. You've been through a lot. Yeah. What would your advice to them be? Just about to start a new journey, a new adventure. What would you say to them? Toughen up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it stinks. Look at it. it stinks. I get it. You're not like, you're not going to have your graduation. You don't have your prom. You don't have like all these things you want to have. But look at you're not unique. Everybody's stuck in the same situation. I'm in quarantine at home with five women every single day. Okay? <laughs> so everybody's going through this. And we're going to get through it. It's not going to last forever. Things are going to be okay. And when it's over, I'm sure you'll find a way to celebrate and party and have a good time. You know, like I think uh, – the advice I tell a lot of people, like whether they're on the island or in real life, is you've got to be able to adapt to your situation. The people that are best able to adapt, they're the ones that don't just survive, they end up thriving. You're going to be faced with obstacles and challenges your whole life. Not only this quarantine, your whole life you're going to be faced with situations. You've got to be able to roll with the punches. You know, you can't like just crumble as soon as like the wind blows the wrong way. So, uh, I don't know. I wrote that book, The Boston Rob Rule Book. I think a lot of it is common sense stuff and uh, it's lessons that I've learned in my life. Some of it, you know, is second nature to me, but I think maybe the younger generation needs to hear it sometimes. I don't know. Toughen up. You know, I was nervous the Florida sun was going to warm you up yeah. a little bit, make you a little soft. <laughs> you still have the Boston tough in you. I'm excited. I'm happy to see that. So, you mentioned the book. You definitely are full of wisdom. What do you hope your readers get from the book? You know, like I just said, like, I think it's like lots of like common sense messages. You know, it's not earth shattering stuff here. And I try to do it with a little bit of humor. But for the <laughs> most part, I just want people to know, like, you know, like, just use your brain. Like, go through life and do the right thing. These are simple things you're supposed to do. You know, treat people respectfully. When the cards are down, you don't quit. You got to keep fighting. Anything worth having in your life, you're going to have to work hard for, and you got to be persistent. You heard the expression, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I got one daughter that's relentless. When she wants something, she just nags and nags and nags. And I'm just like, oh, my God, just give her what she wants. <laughs> it's a lesson in life. If you want something, go after it and be persistent. So, uh, I don't know. There's lots of good lessons there. I think, uh, I think, the, I think it, most of it boils down to common sense and just use your brain. Absolutely. So, I need to read that book for sure. The small common yeah. sense things are important, but you talk about kind of, you know, lessons you've learned and you have the psychology degree from BU and you applied it in different ways, but I know you're also a, a big poker player which was revealed on this last season how much do you think your poker skills have helped in survivor or have your survivor skills helped with poker yeah i think maybe kind of vice versa i think it kind of went the other way with me i don't know mm -hmm. they definitely go hand in hand but um i feel like i i, I found survivor first and then poker yeah not the other way around but i think a lot of um it's probably a, lot, a good thing a lot of the lessons in survivor and poker are intertwined. You have to pay attention at the table. You have to, you know, look at your opponent, see if what they're telling you makes sense. See if the story that they're trying to say is a story that's a legitimate story. Like in Survivor, if somebody tells you, oh yeah, they're gonna work with you, they're looking at you, but they're looking over here and they're not like looking at you. 
and then all of a sudden what they're, what they're trying to propose doesn't really make sense, then you can pretty much deduct that they're probably full of it and not, you know, yeah. they don't really want to work with you. It's the same in poker, you know. Somebody raises a big bet, you know, and you're like, well, if you really had a big hand, would you be trying to lure me in with a small bet? Are you scared? Are you, you know, uh, there's lots of parallels between the two. Very, very interesting. So one more question for you, because I'm dying to know, I know all the fans around Boston Beyond are dying to know, is the Boston Rob survivor career at its end? Is it over? I don't know. You know, I feel like, uh, I feel like I've done everything I've wanted to do in the game. You know, I played the first season was so special. It was my first season. The second season, I met my wife. The third season, I got to go play back with all these legends. The fourth time, I finally won the game. Then they built a statue of me. And then the last one I played with all the winners. I mean, I feel like I've done everything. So, uh, but then again, I felt this way after the, every time I played too. I feel so. like you don't know what you want to do until you know it's presented in front of you. What if he comes, what if, for example, Jeff comes on, he's like, Rob, we want you as a co-host. I think that'd be yeah. awesome. That'd be something. So you never I know. Think I think Jeff's doing just fine hosting. Yeah, this. he's doing a pretty good job for sure, for sure. Yeah, if it gets to the point where he needs a co-host, then I think we're going to have to have a conversation. <laughs> I don't know. 188 Pump days a long time to spend on the island, and uh, I feel like my journey is complete. So I'm happy to have been able to share it with all of you guys. I know the reason why the show's even been on the air for almost two decades is because of the fans. So uh, thank you guys for all coming along the ride with me.